Have you ever wondered what is a real problem you should be solving? That's what we'll talk about today. There seemed to be endless obstacles. It seemed that the root cause of all of them was fear. Marion Milner. Today we're going to talk about root causes and why they're important to identify when it comes to solving problems in our own lives. A few years ago, I got my certification in Lean Health Six Sigma, which means that it's a project management tools, how to find the best ways to solve problems, reduce errors when it comes to manufacturing, or in this case, healthcare. And there were applicable solutions in all the courses. And last week I was listening to a podcast and this person was talking about why they couldn't start a business. You know, there were all these problems and all these reasons. And the interesting thing in listening to her talk about why she couldn't start her own business, none of them seemed to me to really be the problem. It had a lot to do with her parents and her upbringing and the fact that they didn't support her. And she was going on through these reasons and so someone was trying to help her through them. And I wondered, is the person who is trying to help her, should they really be trying to solve those problems? Because in the end, all the problems that she listed had really nothing to do with why her business wasn't getting started. And then I wondered, does anyone really know exactly why they can't do something, what problems they really have? And that's one of the things that Six Sigma talks about, finding root causes. How do you know if you're getting the wrong problem to solve? A lot of times people will talk about their history. I mean, I know too, I have a history. I have a history of instability when I was growing up. I have a history of alcoholism when it came to my father. I could go on with a number of reasons why all these things aren't working for me or why I can't get the things I want to get in life. Somewhere, I don't know, maybe a decade ago, I started realizing that I'm never going to get what I want in life by solving what I thought the real problems with me and my history were causing for me. It wasn't the problem at all. And I see people spin because of the wrong reasons. So that's why I wanted to talk about finding the real reasons. If you, for example, think that you're overweight and you're overweight because your parents fed you poorly, because you had low self-image, because you never thought of yourself as an active person, maybe counseling helps and going back and digging deep into those problems. But I wonder, too, if just tackling the things that are going wrong is the right solution. You can think about your parents and how you were raised and the images that you had of yourself and the way dating relationships treated you. But in the end, what you have to fix is what you're eating, how you're moving, how you're treating your body. That's the real root cause of your problem. In my case, I could think about dating. We talked about dating in the last podcast. And I could say, all these guys who didn't treat me right and my ex-boyfriend who's kind of mean to me sometimes, and that's why I don't date. I can't solve those problems. They happened in the past. There's nothing to solve for them. Again, you could go to counseling if you feel like it would help you. But the root cause that I'm not dating is because I don't go out there and try to date. I don't meet people to date. I don't put myself into situations where I could date. And the joke was that the only person I was ever going to date was a door to door salesperson who comes to my door because he's trying to sell me a vacuum cleaner or someone <laughs> asking me if I want to buy AT&T. There's no way I can date someone unless they actually walked into my door. That's not a successful method of dating. So again, those root causes are the key to solving our problems. But we get so caught up in trying to fix symptoms, symptoms of poor image, symptoms of feeling inadequate, symptoms of feeling like our parents didn't treat us very well or we never learned the right lesson. Heck, I used that kind of excuse 
for why I couldn't save money, why I couldn't get into a budget. Because I never learned those skills. Because I grew up poor. And now I'm finally having fun in my life. I don't want to fix this. I want to have more fun. But it was all just an excuse, my past, to not do the thing I really needed to do. To not save for my retirement or not save for an emergency fund. I just wanted to have fun because I didn't have fun when I was a kid. So this is where we really need to get away from fixing symptoms and again, get back into the root problems. And if we get stuck, if we decide to stick with our decisions, if we decide to stick with our stories that this is why and that's why and this other thing's why, we're just going to stay stuck. And we've seen it too that problems sometimes get better if we ignore them, but not very often. Usually we have to tackle our problems, whether they're simple or they're complex. In some way, we have to tackle what's going wrong in our lives, the things that aren't making us happy, or our marriages and our relationships with our children. They need tackling. And that takes a really good eye, this general root cause analysis. And That's basically, again, what caused the problem in the first place. What happened? Why did it happen? You know, if you got overweight, if you're having trouble dating, what happened? Well, I meet the wrong kind of men or I eat the wrong kinds of food. Now, why did it happen? You can get into that trap of going way back and saying, all these things happened to me. But instead, what we have to look at are the real problems. Try to look at the facts. The facts are, again, what actually caused the problem, then trying to break down the problem into smaller parts, and then we can come up with the solutions. So the first part we're going to talk about is how to break down the problem so we understood what happened. That's great to do when you're looking at a big life problem. You're in the wrong job, you eat the wrong foods, you have the wrong men, you aren't happy with where you live. We can certainly talk about what got you there, and that's a good way to identify it. Some ways that we can look at it is, first of all, determine the consequences of some of the decisions we've made in the past. I decided to move to this town because it was easy for me to live here after I was in college. Or there's always the five whys, and that's where you ask the question of yourself, why do you always meet the wrong men? Well, because I go to the wrong places. Why? Because my friends like to go to the wrong places. Why? Because they like a different type of guy, and so they're always going to these bars that I don't really enjoy. So maybe now I just figured out, I keep asking myself why, that maybe I need to find different friends to go out with who go to places that I'm more interested in meeting men at. But drilling down and asking those questions, or even drilling down and breaking everything into smaller steps, you can understand essentially what's happening with you. Then the last step comes, you solve what's going to cure the issue right now that will also keep you from having the situation happen again. Who's going to be responsible for doing these tasks? And if you put the solution in place, what could possibly go wrong? Maybe you would cause unintended problems by fixing some of the solutions. For example, I saw an organization try to basically strong arm a lot of their staff into using data in a different way. And what happened is, is it made the staff so unhappy that many people quit. That's an unintended consequence. If you get into this process where you decide that you're going to eat better food, possible risk of that solution is now you're going to eat the better food along with the bad food, and now you've doubled your calories. So now what can you do in order to prevent yourself from having that mistake happen? By planning ahead, you can look at ways this plan could go awry. There's a neat tool, and I'll put it on my website so you can see a picture of it. It's called a fishbone diagram. And the diagram is in the shape of a fish, just like it sounds. And it looks like what bones in a fish look like. But the idea is it allows you to visualize the root causes of what's going on in your life. 
So it starts off with the fish head being the problem. What's going wrong? And then the skeleton of the fish are all the different topics that could branch out and cause us problems. This is part of the Six Sigma analysis, and it's a way that you can analyze what is actually happening. So again, the head of the fish is the problem. There's four, at least, causes to what's going on, and those are going to be the fish bones coming off of the main bone of the fish. And sometimes, you know, like in business, we would talk about people or staffing or our workflow processes. But in our personal life, we don't have to go that direction. We're just using this for ourselves. And so it may be that if you were looking at the situation of why does your house keep getting so messy? Problem is mess in the house. The main contributors to the mess may be the children are just going crazy and putting everything everywhere. The pets are going crazy and dragging all their toys all over the place. I don't put anything away when I get done with work because I'm tired. And my husband loves to work on projects and he never really puts them away. So now we have four root causes. In this case, they all turn out to be people. But maybe another root cause is we just have too much stuff around the house and it's easy to get messy. You know, so try looking for those overarching problems that you can write down on these fish bones and using the methods that we talked about at first drilling in deep, the five whys, we can maybe get to some of these root causes. In our case, we had people as a problem. We had stuff as a problem. Maybe the house is just too small for the amount of traffic we're getting in the house. So the actual structure of the house might be the third problem. And then the last problem is that nobody has time to put things away. So those are the four problems we have. Now that we've identified the problems, we can even put little lines on the fish bones that drag the details out a little bit more. When I say we have too much stuff, maybe it's too many pet toys. Maybe it's too many children toys. Maybe it's too many husband projects. When it comes to the people who are causing problems, write the names down. So we have these root causes in place. The fishbone diagram at least will give you some more ideas of what could possibly be going wrong. It's easy to just get angry at the moment and say, oh, my husband won't put away his projects or get mad at the kids. But maybe the structural problem is bigger than that. Again, maybe we just have too much stuff in too small of a space. And we can use the fishbone diagram to help us figure out exactly what's causing the problem. Look for areas of weakness that are happening. Again, it may be that the hallway is where all the stuff ends up and everyone trips. Husband projects are happening every Saturday while the kids' toys are almost every day of the week. And once you have those root causes in place, that will help you then to determine what kind of plan can we take in order to stop this from happening. And when you're doing this, obviously, for a manufacturing plant or some large endeavor, these fishbone diagrams can get quite large. But we're just doing it to solve some problems in our own lives, then we don't have to get that complicated. But another way of breaking down some of the problems has to do with maybe controllable factors. Think about it if you were looking at your diet. I can control how much food I eat. I can control how much I exercise. Then there's uncontrollable factors. And that might be that There's so much food in the house because other people like to eat other food. It's not fair of me to tell everyone else how they're going to eat in the house. And so that feels uncontrollable. Then there's nuisance factor. And so nuisance factor is not the main problem. It's just something that's contributing to it. There was this uh, steakhouse right by my office. And I drive by and I thought, hmm, that's looked pretty good. And they had carry out meals. And so I got in this really bad habit of driving there and picking up a carry home meal and eating it when I got home. It's not the reason I had a weight problem, but it was certainly a blockable nuisance in my life. So I can work with that. Then there's something called the held constant factor. You don't have to remember all these names, but keep them in mind when you're thinking about the root causes. And held factor constants, they're things that we can't change. They're things that we're going to remain stable even as we're doing our repair of this situation. 
So for example, the kids need to bring cupcake at the end of every month. Can't fix that. So while it can contribute to the factor, it's something I really can't change. So those are your kinds of problems that you have that you're trying to put in your fishbone diagram. Some people are very visual and this is a good way to do it. If you even want, and if this problem is involving other people, there's ways of getting people involved in this process. You can have them help you figure out what are the contributing factors to this issue. Again, if this is your family issue and you're looking at clutter, now you can hand out post-it notes and a big wall and start putting up post-it notes for all the ideas we can think of that may be contributing to this matter. And the idea behind this is that you always want to tell everyone, no idea is a bad idea. Because it may be that if you're talking about how much garbage we eat in this house and how much junk food there is, and you hand post-its to the kids, you may give this impression that their ideas are bad ideas. But they may actually have some good insights into what's going wrong there. Once you have some ideas, you know, maybe even leave this board up for a while. I've been doing some analysis in my own life, and I have a place where I've been putting post-it notes and looking at some of the ideas that I'm having. Eventually, what I did with my ideas is I started categorizing them by groups. We even did this when we rebuilt our church, where we had a wall of all the things we want to happen. And then we started categorizing them into space, activities, people. You know, there was ways that we could then bring those ideas together and start combining some of them. Now that you have all these ideas, again, we're going to categorize them. We're going to give them a priority, which ones are the most important, which are most parts of the root problems. And then we're going to prioritize which ones have to be fixed sooner. As the problem becomes more problematic, more key to what's going on, we're going to put it closer to the fish head. Is that we're going to use this pattern of looking for root causes, asking the five whys, drilling down into details, possibly taking surveys, questionnaires, then coming down with the needs and breaking them up into the fishbone diagram, if you want to do it. Sometimes it's just enough to take all the post-it notes or the note cards. You can get those little square note cards, putting them into the same category and seeing if there aren't common places we can work together to get the idea. When you tackle those root causes and you go after what's really having the problem in your life, that's when you'll be able to solve some of your problems and start making some headway on what really matters. So my challenge to you is try this out. Find one problem that you're having in your life and either come up with your own ideas and write them down on post-it notes, note cards, organize them, categorize them. Maybe you can even draw a fishbone diagram and figure out what is the most root cause that is causing the problems and what are some other smaller problems and then start listing out some of the solutions you can come up with that will help you from falling into this problem again. All right, everyone, thanks so much. I hope this helps in creating some methods that you have, finding hidden causes, other ways that you can solve the real problems that are going on in your life. Please remember to subscribe to the podcast and tell a friend. And if you wouldn't mind, please remember to write a review. And remember, the path of solving our problem starts with small steps. 